Hi, this is Dr. Theo Walmerantz of Christian Family Church International. Mr. President, we stand with all the churches who are requesting that we have church attendance up to 50% of our capacity. We are responsible people and we assure you that we will take care of the safety of our members. Thank you for your consideration. Hi everybody. This is Dr. Thea Walmerantz. We are going to be learning about heaven. The wonderful life we will experience in heaven, what that will be like, what heaven looks like, all that in this series. Now this is part three in our series. And I do have so much material that I'm going to add two extra parts. So we're going to have five parts in the series, all right? We'll continue with that later on. But now we are dealing with part three, all about heaven, and the title is God Blesses the Faithful. So continue to be faithful because this is your reward. Let's go to Revelation 22 and verse 1 from the New Living Translation. And the angel showed me a pure river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, coursing down the center of the main street, on each side of the river grew a tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, with a fresh crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. All right, let's unpack that. Since we have already learned that God's throne will be in the new Jerusalem, and Revelation 22.1 tells us that this river of life flows from the throne of God and the tree of life is on the side of the river. Therefore, the tree of life must obviously be in the new Jerusalem, which is part of the new heaven. Therefore, we can assume that we will one day walk in the paradise of God and eat from the fruit of the tree of life, which was God's original plan when he created Adam and Eve. It is possible that the concept of the original Garden of Eden was the tree of life and the river of life will be a large park in the center of the city in the new Jerusalem. Now we are beginning to have a glimpse of what heaven is like. Revelation 6 verse 9, NRV translation. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. Now, they were executed for having a Bible and confessing Jesus is Lord. 
Persecution is already on the rise yeah, in America and around the world. Persecuting believers in Christ. Verse 10, as we carry on reading. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Verse 11. Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were to be killed, as they had been, was completed. Now notice the following points as we unpack this portion of Scripture. Number one, these are the same people who were once on earth, now transported to the existing heaven. Number two, they are honored. Because of their commitment to preaching the gospel of Christ, they are honored. Number three, they were slain because they gave testimony of Jesus. Number four, they were able to share their feelings of disappointment over the injustice done to them and others who had been executed for preaching the gospel. Number five, they were able to speak to God and ask God to judge those who were guilty. Number six, they wanted to know how long it would be before God did something about it. Therefore, time was still in effect in the current existing heaven. How long means time is still something they are having to experience in the existing heaven, not so in the new heaven. Number eight, they knew what was happening in the earth, even though they were in heaven. Number nine, in verse 11, God said they would wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were to be killed was completed. It's not God's will that the saints are martyred. That's not God's plan. But God knows the beginning from the end. He knows everything. Therefore, he is able to say that. Once again, we see the sense of time in the existing heaven. Number 10, they were looking forward to God fulfilling his promise while they were in heaven. Number 11, they had compassion for the fellow servants of Christ, their brothers. As we see in verse 11, those still on the earth, they had compassion for them. Number 12, the family of God in heaven and the family of God on earth are one family. Now those who have already gone to heaven may be separated from us temporarily, but we are not separated from them. They are very aware of what's going on in our lives. Let me say that again. Those who are in heaven now, they are separated from us temporarily, but we are not separated from them. They are very aware of what's going on in our lives. All right. Number 13, God knows exactly what's going on with his children on the earth. At the moment, right now, he knows. He knows exactly what persecution and suffering his children are experiencing today. It is estimated that more than 150,000 people die for Christ each year. Right now, more than 150,000 people are being executed for Christ each year on earth because they refuse to renounce Jesus as their Savior. When we stand before the Lord one day, we will all be required to give an account of our life while we are on earth. 
while some are serving Jesus with all their hearts and even prepared to be even prepared to die for Christ, there are others who find it hard to serve Jesus in normal circumstances, even go to church when the sun is shining. We'll have to explain what we have done for Jesus when we stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ. And during the short opportunity we have on earth right now, family, let's be faithful. Let's represent the Lord Jesus to this lost world. And let's serve the body of Christ, serve one another faithfully as unto the Lord. Because of the great rewards we have waiting for us in heaven. All right, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in our bodies. Now once again, the judgment seat of Christ is for those believers who serve Jesus and we will be rewarded for our works of faith in serving the Lord. That happens during the seven-year tribulation period while God is pouring out his wrath on the earth. After the millennium reign of Christ, after 1,000 years of us reigning with Jesus on the earth, the great white throne judgment takes place where the living and the dead who don't know God and those who do know God who have not been judged yet will stand before him and be judged. And that's where Satan and the Antichrist will be judged as well. All right. Now, we will be rewarded for our good deeds at the judgment seat of Christ. All right. Revelation 14, verse 13 from the New Living Translation. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from all their toils and trials, for their good deeds follow them. For their good deeds follow them. The Lord Jesus said, if we will give a cup of cold water to someone, the least of his children, we will receive our reward. It's as if we are giving that water to him personally. That's what Jesus said. Now, I imagine that the blanket grandma knitted to encourage a poor family in winter will be displayed in heaven somewhere for all to see what she has done. All who look upon it will understand and know what grandma did. The encouragement, the praise that went up to God, all caused by that simple little blanket, will be on display in eternity forever. Is it not possible that all of our deeds and words of love given to others to encourage them along life's journey as they serve Jesus will be on display in heaven if our good deeds follow us into eternity, as the Word of God says. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13, from the New Living Translation. But there is going to come a time of testing at the judgment day to see what kind of work each builder has done. Everyone's work will be put through the fire to see whether or not it keeps its value. If the work survives the fire, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builders themselves will be saved, but like someone escaping through a wall of flames. 
Those who have done nothing for Christ will make it to heaven as if they are escaping through a wall of flames. And this is no joke. No joke. We plan for our vacations on earth. Should we not plan for our eternal destiny? Should not we give some thought to serving Christ to lay up treasure in heaven? Why should we escape through a wall of flames and barely make it into heaven by the skin of our teeth? No, let's serve Jesus, be faithful, family. Let's get involved. God bought us. We belong to him. He's expecting us to do something for others as well. I encourage you to get involved in small groups because a small group leader, I'm sure, will be receiving a great reward in heaven. I would encourage you to be part of a fellowship group and learn how to run it and end up running your own fellowship group. That should be your goal. Even better still, amen, even better still, be a group leader. Now we need to be helping for our own sake, not for the sake of the ones we help as much as for our own sake. I need to serve people for my sake, and so do you. Get involved in some way or other. At least talk to Pastor Greg or your pastor or Pastor Everett. Get involved in the dream team. Serve the Lord some way. The rewards we receive in heaven will always remind us and everybody else of how we live for Christ while we are on earth. All right, go to Matthew 6, verse 19, please. Don't store up treasures here on earth where they can be eaten by moths and get rusty and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where they will never become moth-eaten or rusty and where they will be safe from thieves. Where your treasure is, there your heart and thoughts will be also. So the word of God tells us once we start laying up treasure in heaven, we'll become more uh, familiar with heaven, we'll long more for heaven, and we'll desire to be there. So let's lay up treasure in heaven. Because where your treasure is, there your thoughts and heart will also be. Amen. Whatever we do for Christ here becomes a treasure for us in eternity. Let's work in Christ's kingdom to encourage other believers. We can also lay up treasure in heaven by giving to the poor. Whether they are believers or not, we are lay up, laying up treasure in heaven when we give to the poor. I like to give to a beggar on the street and tell him, the reason I'm giving this to you is because Jesus asked me to give it to you because Jesus loves you. And if that's all you have time to do at the light before it changes color, that will make a difference in his life. Throughout all eternity, through the eons of the eons and the ages of the ages, everyone will be able to see clearly our rewards for our work on earth as we serve Jesus. For a brief moment in time on the earth, what we do to extend Christ's kingdom will be clearly seen by all through eternity. All those who do nothing for Jesus will have eternity to regret their lukewarm and selfish heart attitude while they were living on the earth. A selfish and lukewarm heart attitude causes people to do nothing for Jesus except live for themselves. All right, Psalm 63, verse 1. Oh God, 
You are my God. Early while I seek you, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Whether we realize it or not, we are created with a heart that longs after God. He made us that way. More than anything else, our heart longs after God because He created us with that vacuum in there which only He can fill. God created us with that capacity and only God can satisfy that capacity. The absence of God brings thirst and longing to the heart of man. Heaven would be nothing more than an empty building if it were not for the glory of God's wonderful presence in heaven. I want to say that again. Heaven would be nothing but an empty building if it were not for the glorious presence of God in heaven. Thank God we will be living in that rich, glorious presence of the Father for eternity. Now, all pleasure we receive comes from God. And none of it can compare to the pleasure and joy of God's presence. Everything we do down here that brings pleasure, as wonderful as it is, all was given to us by God, but none of that can compare to the joy of God's presence that we will experience in heaven. The greatest gift God will ever give us is himself. Having said all that, it is obviously our deepest desire to look upon the face of our Creator and our Redeemer. It's obviously our greatest desire to look upon the face of the Father God one day. The Bible has something to say about this. In Exodus 33, verse 18, And Moses said to God, Please show me your glory. Then the Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. But the Lord said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. No man shall see my face and live, Moses. 22. And I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. 23. Then I will take my hand away, I'll take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. My face shall not be seen. Now go to 1 John 4.12 in the New Testament. No one has seen God at any time. Up until now, no one has seen the Father at any time. All right? One John, so John 1, 17. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. 1 Timothy 6, verse 16. God alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. So there's about five scriptures that tell us that nobody up till today has ever seen the face of the Father God. Now, I know I've heard some preachers say that they went in heaven and they saw the face of God, the Father, on the throne. I have no faith to believe that. I have no faith to believe that. Because I've got five scriptures that say that's not, that's never happened. There's one thing that prevents man from looking upon the face of God that I can think of. Our human body cannot live with that much glory. It would be like plugging a hairdryer 
designed to take 120 volts or 220 volts into a million volt, a million volt plug. That million volts of electricity will blow that hairdryer to smithereens. Therefore, once we have received our resurrected bodies after the rapture, and stand before the Father and the Son, we shall be able to look upon his face in the new heaven and the new earth. Let's see if we can prove this from the word of God. In the new heaven and new earth, we shall look upon his face. Please go to Revelation 22 and verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the middle of its street, and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and his servants shall serve him. Verse 4, they shall see his face, they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Now, there's a lot in here that we need to consider. Number one, look at verse three. And his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face. So the faithful servants of the Lord they shall see his face. Does that mean that there will be folks in heaven who escape through judgment, through the wall of fire, like they escaped through naked with no clothes on and no rewards? Does it mean that they will not see God's face for eternity? I don't know. But it says his servants shall see him. The servants shall serve him, they shall see him. And it says, and they shall reign forever and ever. So the servants will be promoted to positions of authority in heaven. I don't think those who do nothing for Jesus get that. So to me it looks like, I don't know for sure, that the faithful get to look upon the Father's face. There's something else we need to consider in this portion of scripture. There shall be no night in heaven, and the sun as we have it now shall not be there. But the glory of God coming from the Father and from Christ shall light up the whole of the new heaven and the new earth. Praise God. There shall be no night. We shall rest, but we shall not sleep. We shall enjoy every moment in heaven. Praise God for eternity. All right, well, I hope that this has encouraged you to be faithful and keep serving the Lord in every way that the Bible requires. Show love to your neighbor by doing things. Surprise them. Take care of them. And make sure you're available to share your testimony with those who don't know Jesus. Well, Pastor Bev and I love you very much with all our hearts. Now, next weekend, Pastor Bev is teaching. She's got a very powerful message. And then we'll come back to uh, our message on heaven. I've got two more parts to share with you. I look forward to that. Every head bowed, every eye closed. How many of you Want to be sure you're going to heaven one day. Since especially how wonderful it is, it's so much better than going to hell forever. If you want to have that assurance in your heart, simply say this prayer with me, please. Dear Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. 
Please forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and save my life. Thank you, Jesus. I declare you are the Lord of my life and I will live for you with all my heart till I see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I'm bound for heaven. God is my Father. Praise God. All right. Well, you said it. You prayed it. We love you. We'll see you in heaven. Be faithful. Congrats. Thank you for watching the Christian Family Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join our online community and join us live every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream and share this with your friends. Thank you again for watching and God bless you.